The Devil's Bible Very few sacred texts have ever existed with such powerfully sinister associations and connotations as the Codex Gigas, also known as the Devil's Bible, so-called because of the 50-centimeter-tall illustration of the Devil, which occupies an entire page within. Interestingly, the fork-tongued Devil sits opposite a description of the Kingdom of Heaven, suggesting that the artist had an interest in the dichotomy of good and evil. Famous for its sheer size, as well as its many intricate illustrations, the Devil's Bible is a 13th century manuscript from Bohemia in what is now part of the Czech Republic. Codex Gigas literally means giant book, and it holds the title of the largest extant medieval illustrated manuscript in existence, measuring 92 centimeters in length and around 22 centimeters in thickness, bound with leather and metal. Its pages demonstrate incredible detail and precision and contain the entire Latin Bible, in addition to various other historical and religious texts and most disturbingly, directions for exorcism rituals and magic formulas. The Codex is said to have been created with the intention of storing all the world's knowledge in a single book, and some of its contents puzzle historians to this day. While its consistency and uniformity suggest that it may be the work of a lone scribe, historians suggest that it was most likely created over a very long period of time, as reproducing the texts alone without any of the intricate illustrations, would take more than 25 years of non-stop writing. If it were made by one man, as the signature suggests, it would likely have taken an entire lifetime. Perhaps more fascinating than the book's size, however, is the dark legend which surrounds its creator. It has been said that the scribe was a monk who had broken his vows and was therefore sentenced to be entombed within a wall while alive, a punishment known as immurement. Fearing his punishment, the monk promised to create a text which would encapsulate all human knowledge in the space of a single night. As midnight approached and the monk realized that he could not complete his task alone, he called upon Lucifer and exchanged his soul for the completion of the manuscript. The monk incorporated the famous illustration of the devil out of gratitude, and in the morning his life was spared. Another fascinating legend surrounding the Codex attempts to explain why ten pages are mysteriously missing from it. The Curse of the Devil's Bible, as the story is known, describes how the book was sold by the monastery during times of hardship and ended up in the hands of the Roman Emperor, who became increasingly fascinated with the Codex Gigas. His fascination grew into paranoia, which resulted in him being overthrown by his family. The book ended up in Stockholm's Royal Library, where in 1697 a wildfire broke out. The librarian ordered books to be thrown from the windows to protect them and it was during the fall from the library's window that ten pages fell out of the Codex. However, historians and scholars suggest that the pages were intentionally torn out and may still exist in a private collection somewhere. The Devil's Bible now resides in the National Library of Sweden, and experts hope it may one day be reunited with the missing pages. Obsidian Mirror from 1558 until the 1570s, a man named John Dee was responsible for advising Queen Elizabeth I of England, and his methods involved an unusual combination of science, mathematics, astrology, and divination. John Dee's eccentricities developed over time, and he became infatuated with the occult, even attempting to communicate with angels through the use of scryers. He also began to collect mystical artifacts such as crystals, relics, and mirrors. One such artifact is the famous obsidian mirror, a form of spirit mirror made from highly polished volcanic glass. In many different cultures around the world, spirit mirrors are believed to be a way of communicating with the spirit world. In his efforts to summon images of angels in the mirror, John Dee worked with a medium and criminal named Edward Kelly, who claimed to be able to see spirits and transmute base metals into gold. The pair held numerous seances using the item, many of which were documented. However, the true origins of this artifact remained unknown for many years, and nobody knows exactly how Dee came to possess it. It was only in 2021 that researchers published the findings of an investigation into the source of the mirror. By analyzing the chemical composition of the mirror with x-rays, they determined it to be of Mexican origin and closely related to two other known Aztec spirit mirrors. Aztecs believed obsidian to have medicinal and spiritual healing properties, 
and it was a highly valued commodity. Obsidian mirrors were crafted for their alleged ability to capture the soul of a person, and a number of them were sent back to Europe by Spanish conquistadors. It seems likely that Dee, on his travels, had sought out an obsidian mirror after hearing of its powerful occult properties. Today, John Dee's obsidian mirror is on display in the British Museum in London. Teufelsbrücke Prior to the construction of the Goddard Tunnel, which connects northern and southern Switzerland, those making the journey were forced to cross the Solenen Gorge and the Teufelsbrücke, also known as the Devil's Bridge. The gorge itself is steep, sheer, deadly, and formed of solid granite. Traversing it requires crossing a vertigo-inducing bridge with an incredible historical legacy. In the 12th century, a footpath existed that made the gorge passable but precarious. It relied on a series of steps carved into the rock faces, making steep ascents and descents possible. A wooden bridge was constructed 100 feet above the fast-flowing river to make the gorge passable to horses sometime around the year 1230, and another was constructed in the early 1300s, which rested on beams across the wide gorge. Essential to the cheese trade and access to Italian politics, the bridge was rebuilt many times. The construction of the original bridge has been variously attributed to the mountain-dwelling Balzer people, a blacksmith from the nearby village, and, most famously, the devil. According to legend, the residents of Uri, in a desperate bid to complete the bridge, called upon the devil for assistance. In return for his dark services, the devil demanded the first soul that dared to cross the completed bridge. The locals instead tricked the devil by tossing a crust of bread over the bridge. Tempted by the morsel, a dog rushed across, unwittingly becoming the devil's payment. Overcome by fury at their trickery, the devil tore the unfortunate creature to shreds. Enraged by their deceit, the devil sought a massive boulder to demolish the bridge. But as he was on this destructive mission, he crossed paths with the man of faith. This holy man sternly reprimanded the devil, causing him to drop the boulder, sparing the bridge. The bridge itself has been rebuilt many times since, and it was the site of one of the critical battles of the Napoleonic Wars, which saw it sabotaged to prevent the crossing of armies. It would later be immortalized in a J.M.W. Turner painting. We still do not know who built the original Devil's Bridge, but nearby there does indeed stand a large boulder known to all as the Devil's Stone. Shigir Idol Discovered more than a hundred years ago and crafted more than 12,000 years before that, the Shagir Idol is the oldest known wooden sculpture in existence. It's also believed that it may be the first man-made depiction of evil. For context, this is more than twice as old as the Great Pyramid of Egypt. The idol, found by gold miners at a depth of four meters in a Russian peat bog, was extracted in ten fragments and pieced back together to create a sculpture that stood almost three meters tall. However, a later 1914 reconstruction proposed an alternative configuration of the fragments, reaching a height of 5.3 meters. Around the middle of the 20th century, some of the fragments went missing, and only drawings of these remain. The Shagir idol was carved from a larch tree that was 159 years old when it was felled, sometime near the end of the last ice age as Eurasia began to warm. The top of the Shagir idol features a human head and face. The body of the idol is decorated with geometric patterns, as well as eight additional faces and a number of hands, giving the piece a totem-like appearance. The expression worn by the main face has been interpreted in different ways. To some, it is singing, but to others, it appears to be screaming in anger or agony. The consensus tends to agree, however, that the being it depicts is malicious. Some historians have proposed that the idol contains a hidden narrative, telling the creation story that its carpenter believed. Others have proposed that the patterns on its surface may in fact function as a navigational map, or that the idol once stood as a sign of danger to those who encountered it, warning them not to enter a particular area. As fascinating as the idol itself is, the implications of such an ancient piece of ritual art are even greater. The discovery of the idol, and the fact that it far predates any known comparable pieces, has entirely reshaped how historians look at the history of art. The Devil's Footprints Embedded in hardened volcanic rock, these mysterious human-like footprints suddenly appeared on the slopes of the Rocco Monfina volcano near Campania, Italy, in the late 18th century. A torrential downpour of rain had lashed the landscape and loosened tons of volcanic rock. 
The resulting landslide generated a catastrophic wave of water and ash that crashed through the valley near the village of Torre El Picili, destroying a local mill. The devastation appeared to be of an apocalyptic scale, as if ripped straight from the pages of the Bible. Locals, in a state of awe and disbelief, stumbled upon a trail of footprints leading away from the heart of the volcano. The conclusion was startling and eerie. Only the devil himself, they reasoned, could have possibly forged such a path. Who else could dare to tread through the fiery inferno of molten lava or leave such unmistakable imprints in the hardened face of solid rock? Even though there were three distinct tracks of footprints, as well as a few handprints, the devil's footprints were genuinely believed by many to have been Satan's mark on the surface of the earth. This remained the prominent explanation until 2002, when archaeologists examined the footprints and confirmed them to have been made by bipedal hominids some 350,000 years ago, making them the oldest known hominid footprints outside of Africa at the time. The three individuals who made these tracks are believed to have been ancestors of the Neanderthals, a little over five feet tall and most likely fleeing the volcano. It seems that the tracks were made as the three hominids attempted to escape an eruption and that the volcanic ash which followed served to preserve their hastily made footprints. Their Z-shaped path suggests that they employed a switchback method of descending the dangerously steep slope, steadying themselves with their hands where necessary. Due to the size of the prints, it has also been suggested that the individuals may have been children. One researcher from the University of Padua said, quote, these tracks give us unique insight into the activities of some of the earliest known Europeans, and that, quote, it is reasonable to infer that these humans actually witnessed the eruption. We cannot deduce, however, whether they managed to escape the resulting lava flow. Their reason for being at the mouth of a volcano will always remain a mystery, but mankind's innate curiosity seems as likely an explanation as any. Are you ready to unlock the secrets of the past? Subscribe now to Dark Five's brand new Ancient Mysteries channel and embark on a journey to uncover the most enigmatic and awe-inspiring mysteries of ancient times. Leave a comment if there are any ancient mysteries you want us to explore in upcoming videos.